Good day everyone. Welcome to episode 7 of our series dedicated to setting up transactional replication within an always on availability group. In this installment, we'll guide you through the process of removing the server DIS1 from the distributor cluster. We will cover how to eliminate a replica from the distribution databases availability group followed by the steps to remove the server DIS1 from the replication setup. Let's get started. We will be removing the server DIS1 uh, for this particular video. Uh, DIS1 is part of the uh, distributor cluster. So what we'll try to do is like we'll remove this DIS1 and uh, um, what we'll do in the next video is like we will remove uh, PUB1 as well. And then what we'll do, we will retire these two servers from the whole setup. Yeah. So right now uh, you have uh, three servers in uh, distributor cluster, three servers in publi uh, publisher cluster and then two servers in the subscriber cluster. So after this activity, that is by removing this one and uh, pub one, what we'll uh, see at last is like we will have two servers in uh, distributor cluster, uh, two servers in publisher cluster and two servers in subscriber cluster. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do, I'm uh, going to um, head to um, the primary uh, replica of the distributor server which in our case is uh, uh, DIS3. So let's go there and then let's uh, perform the required operation. Let's uh, make sure that uh, this one is um, the secondary. Yep, so let's refresh this one. And then let's uh, go to the availability group and then ensure that uh, this one is the uh, current secondary okay so if you can see here uh, this one is uh, the secondary so now what I'm going to do I'm going to um, uh, remove um, uh, uh, this three from the availability group so let's go to the uh, primary uh, which is your uh, this three and then what I'm going to do is like I'm going to remove this one which is your secondary right now from the availability replica Let's go ahead and do that. Let's wait for it to complete. It is completed now. Now you should see that uh, database in uh, restoring mode as far as this one is concerned. Let's go ahead and check that. Let's first look at the availability group. We don't have anything here as expected. And if you see here, the database uh, distribution is in uh, restoring state. So now what we'll do is like we will uh, connect to uh, this one uh, query window. Yeah. And then let's try executing this query. First one, what I'm doing is like I'm uh, recovering the distribution database uh, with recovery, but I'm ensuring that I'm having this uh, uh, keep replication switch. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, execute that. It's done now, so let's do a refresh and then make sure that the database is online. So distribution database is online now. Yeah. So now what I'm uh, going to do is like I'm uh, going to execute uh, uh, the below three queries. Uh, SP underscore drop dist publisher pub one pub two and pub three on the DAS one just to make sure like I will remove all the orphan jobs um, uh, that is present on uh, um, uh, DIS1. Now that we have removed the distribution database from here, uh, from the AG, so I'm going to execute these things one by one. Let's execute it. It's done. Now let's execute this. This is also done. And let's do the last one, which is POP3. And this is also done. Now what I'm going to do is like I'm going to uh, uh, execute this and then uh, remove the uh, distribution DB. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's wait for it to complete. It is completed now. So now I'm uh, going to uh, execute this and uh, remove the distributor. Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, technically, so we have removed everything as far as uh, this one is concerned. Let's do a refresh.
and then let's uh, look at the databases here. So if you see here, we don't have the distribution database. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to head to uh, 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 the replication monitor, yeah, and then I'm uh, going to check if the replication is working fine. So let me put a, a tracer token. Everything seems to be okay. Just to be extra cautious, what I'm going to do uh, further is like I'm going to do a failover. Uh, let's do the failover for both uh, 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 this three, uh, like uh, the distributor and also on the uh, publisher. Yeah, let's do uh, 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 the failover for both the distributor and uh, publisher. So let's connect to the uh, DIS2 first. And then let's um, do a failover for to this two as far as the distributor is concerned, and let's ensure everything is working fine as far as the replication is concerned. Doing a failover here. Yeah. Let's click on next. Okay, I'm going to do the failover now. Let's wait for the failover to complete. In the meantime, let me connect to pub2 as well because I'm going to um, fail over uh, the availability group. So uh, the distributor failover is completed. Let's uh, connect to pub2 and do the failover there as well. Okay, it's connected now. Let's do a failover to pub2. Uh, pub3 is the current primary. As far as the publisher is concerned, I'm going to uh, now failover from pub3 to pub2. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let the failover complete. Okay, so the failover is completed. Uh, now what we'll do is like we will remove the listener IP uh, as far as uh, this one subnet is concerned. Let's go ahead and uh, remove that. Let's uh, try pinging uh, CMT. DIS1. So the subnet is uh, 172.20. The IP address starts at 172.21. So let's remove that from the distributor cluster. Roles. Go to the listener here. So we don't need this anymore because we have removed DIS1, so 172.20.1. So let's go ahead and remove this. Click on properties here. So we don't need this 172.21.20. Let's remove it and then click on apply. removed now just to be safe I will do one more uh, uh, failover in your case what you can do is like uh, you can um, maybe uh, um, um, 
perform these changes as soon as you remove the replication, yeah? And um, uh, uh, you can remove that particular IP address and then you guys can do one failover. No need to do several failovers. So let's go to this three because this one is no longer there, yeah? Do a failover to this three. Once the failover completes, what we'll do is like, we will verify the replication monitor and then ensure if everything looks good, yeah? So it is completed now. So what we'll do now, let's head to the publisher PB, PUBL, which is the listener for the publisher server, and then let's look at the replication health. Okay, so let's uh, look at the replication monitor. We are connected to the PUBL. Let's insert a tracer token. So we can see that one transaction with one command. So let's go to the tracer token. If you see here, everything is working fine. As soon as uh, we removed um, uh, DIS1, I expected some problems, but uh, everything seems to be okay. We followed uh, the procedures properly and I think uh, everything got completed. So uh, in the next video, we will try removing PUB1 and then uh, follow the same procedure. Let's uh, do the failover, fail back, and then just have a look if the replication is still working fine. And I think we should be fine. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.